PC Coolers RZ620 looks really nice with its Triforce design, but it also has an MSRP of 70 USD. So how does it stack up with the competition? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. Before I get onto the overview to have full disclosure, CPS or PC cooler did send me this cooler to test and review, but all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. So if you do end up liking the video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's go over what comes in the box. There is the heat sink and fans, of course. There is an installation guide, two sets of fan clips, a small tube of thermal compound, an extension cable, and mounting hardware for AMD and Intel. The included extension cable has a switch on it that can control the speed of the fans. There are three settings, silent, performance, and turbo. Silent sets the fans to around 1800 RPM, Turbo sets the fans to around 2200 RPM, while Performance lets the motherboard control the fans. Okay, taking a look at the heatsink. There is a black coating over the aluminum fins and six 6mm six continuous heat pipes. The face of the aluminum fins, or the face of the heatsinks, has an interesting design that PC Cooler calls Triforce, which gives this cooler a very clean look. The cold plate is copper, with the bottom of the cold plate being nickel plated. Now for the fans, the fans have no model name or number on them, but they are both 4-pin PWM fans with a daisy chain on them. They have 9 blades, they have little rubber pads on all the corners, and from what the box says, it does have a max RPM of 2000. The box also indicates that it is a fluid dynamic bearing. Now the dimensions of the RZ620 or RZ620, depending on where you live, I am Canadian, so I might be jumping between those. Just bear with me. So the dimensions of this cooler is 158 millimeters high by 130 millimeters wide by 140 millimeters deep. And that is with the fans attached. Based off these dimensions, there may be RAM clearance issues with that front fan. With that 158 millimeter height, the front fan allows for a dim clearance of only 40 millimeters. So many non-ARGB dims will fit, but some will not. Of course, the fan or fans can be easily moved up two to four millimeters, but you will need to add that number to the 158 just to make sure that your case can actually handle that extra CPU clearance height. For socket compatibility, the RZ620 is compatible with most mainstream Intel sockets, but it is not compatible with their HPC lineup. For AMD compatibility, it's compatible with AM4 and AM5. Moving on to how to install this cooler. I will be installing this cooler onto an AM4 motherboard. Now, the installation between Intel and AMD sockets is different, so if you are planning on installing this onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. As always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, but in a pinch, you can use the box that your motherboard came in. You will need a PH2 screwdriver. You should also have some isopropyl alcohol and something to wipe with. And if you are installing this onto an AM4 or AM5 motherboard like I am, you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. With the CPU installed into the motherboard, place the backplate flat on your mat. Then align the mounting holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. With the motherboard flat on the backplate, find the AMD mounting standoffs and the AMD mounting bars. Screw the mounting standoffs into the backplate. Then align the holes on the AMD mounting bars to the threads on the standoffs, making sure that the mounting bars are facing in. Then find and fasten the screw caps over the mounting bars. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some of that isopropyl alcohol. Then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now making sure to remove the fans from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the spring retention screws on the fastening bar. Then screw in the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars using the PH2 screwdriver. 
When that's done, you can install the fans onto the heatsink. Then we need to plug in the fans. I'll start by daisy chaining the PWM fan connectors from one fan to the other. Then I'll plug the extra lead from one of the fans to the extension cable. Finally, I'll plug the extension cable into the CPU fan header on my motherboard. And that's how you install this cooler. Moving on to the fans PWM range. With the fans attached to the heatsink and the motherboard at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM of this or of these fans at 2100-ish. Dropping the PWM down to 50%, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at around 1150-ish. And dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at 510-ish. And that's the PWM range. Before I get to the temperature charts, if you are liking this video, could you please support the channel by using my Amazon Associates links in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location, and when you add an item or items to the cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. It is a great way to help support the channel without actually putting any additional money into anything. Now on to the temperature testing. If you do have any questions on how I test the CPU coolers, please watch my CPU cooling testing methodology video where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card along the top and I will also have it linked down in the description. So the RZ620 in the 35dBA noise equalized 87 watt test had the CPU's average steady state temperature at 73.9C, which has it between the up here N105 and the Arctic Freezer 34 eSport. This result isn't bad, but it's also not good. And here's the ambient room recording plus the audio recording of the cooler at 35 dBA. Then letting the fans run at full speed had the temperature drop to 72.9 C. So only a one Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests here. Now, when I let the fans run at full speed, the cooler's sound level went up to 38.7 dBA. So really not that much of a jump over the 35 dBA. And here's the ambient room recording plus the audio recording of this cooler at full speed. Now for the 150 watt noise equalized test, the RZ620 had the CPU steady state temperature at 80.1C, which again had it matching the up here N105. Then letting the fans run at full speed had the average CPU steady state temperature drop to 77.8C. This has it between the Peerless Assassin 120 and the up here N105, which I guess makes sense since this is a dual tower cooler and it's able to maintain performance at higher wattages. So what do I think of the RZ620? It is a very nice looking dual tower cooler. Its performance wasn't bad, but it's also not great. So it really does depend on what you're looking for on if the RZ620 makes sense for you. Meaning this is not the best cooler when it comes to price to performance with its 70 USD MSRP. However, if you're looking for something a little bit more refined than the Peerless Assassin 120 and something that still performs well at higher wattages, the RZ620 would actually be a pretty good option in my opinion. Now, of course, if you can find it on sale or something like that, that would be fantastic. Like this cooler at 50 USD would be a really, really good price. If you ever can find it for that, not sure, but like 70 USD is certainly not bad. It's not great. It's kind of that like makes sense area. Uh, it's just, yeah, like thermal right with their prices. I've just like are really weird with all their competitors. They just, I don't know how they sell things for that cheap and actually make money. And I guess I'll just leave it at that. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. As soon as you join, you get to see all of my charts. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description to that. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, there is a link down in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video here. It should be along the same lines as this video that you just watched. 
And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.